Of course, the show. Of made. course, the show we're talking about is The West Wing. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about Frasier, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, so the West Wing, we got Sorkin on uh, Blitzer. I think he was on Wolf Blitzer. No, it's Fareed for, for Zakaria. Forgive me, forgive yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he he was he said that, well, he basically sort of um, not so subtly accused Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of being stupid because uh, he said that you know, there is this need for the Democrats to become the smart party or, or i think he was did he say this it was either the smart or the not dumb party yeah, yeah the one not stupid party one of those is not more stupid. aggressive than the other I, which is very insulting to me i've been a long time advocate of embracing stupid and uh, i think smartness is way overrated but what is with this fetishization of intelligence and how does it speak to this uh centrist world view? well it goes back to the 1990s i think and, and well the 1980s and 90s with kind of the the, the realignment of the Democratic Party under Bill Clinton, um, you know, with the Democratic Leadership Council and, and, and that whole transformation, um, where these people basically, they use kind of the defeats of the 1970s as a pretext for like, uh, just trying to, you know, outflank the Republicans in, you know, on law and order and things like that, become deficit hawks, um, and just become, you know, the party of this kind of new ascendant white collar professional class. And, you know, Bill Clinton may have been the architect of that in politics or one of its main architects, but Aaron Sorkin, I think was really like, he, he's the chronicler of it. He's the one who is able to give it this kind of romantic uh, sheen and make it like, make it seem cool and, um, and, and enlightened. And uh I mean, a few people pointed out in response to the piece I recently wrote in Jacobin that, you know, the worst politics of the show do actually come after um, he, uh, he'd he largely left. I think he came back in season seven and maybe wrote an episode or two. But uh, um, but the politics of the first three seasons that, that he was involved in are nevertheless, you know, very much about, yeah, the smart people versus the stupid people. Um, and, you know, he, he created this whole universe and... Uh, it really, like, I think it started out as kind of like a revisionist, like, here's what the Clinton administration would have been if it wasn't for, you know, the impeachment trials. But then it just became during the Bush era and then into the Obama era, this kind of like, uh, you know, th this, like, this documentary that liberals referred to or what they thought was a documentary for, like, uh, how politics should be. And I don't think it's actually exaggerating too much to say that when they finally got their idyllic liberal president Obama, a lot of them were thinking about um, the West Wing. And even in Obama's White House, they were, you know, in some ways inspired by it and informed by it. Uh, Trudeau, by the way, actually went on the West Wing podcast uh, not that long ago. No. Um, How do they have a podcast? I swear, they have a podcast where they go through every single episode. Um, and so they're not going to be, I don't think they're going to be finished until later this year or maybe even next year. And they had Trudeau on and he said, oh yeah, you know, I, I watched the West Wing to get ready for my speeches and stuff like that. So there's a whole generation of liberals in multiple countries that had their brains broken by Aaron Sorkin. Uh, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that he's done like lasting damage to a lot of people's political psyches. And what he, he wants ultimately, or what he, they embrace, uh, as you pointed out, especially given the threat of, of climate change, is ultimately a kind of nihilism, right? Like these things are not, you know, norms are not as important as carbon, you know, uh, decency and facts or getting your statistics right on a policy paper are not as important as uh, homeless people starving to death in the city. Um you know, and I, I remember uh, there was a episode of The West Wing where um, they had Rob Lowe's character, who I guess Rob Lowe ended up actually embracing the own views of his character uh, on The West Wing, who was talking about taxes. And he was talking about how much he gets taxed and how, like, you know, I I pay X, you know, 70 percent of taxes or whatever, and but I don't get 70 percent of uh 
fire department services or schools <laughs> or all this bullshit. Could I got all these imagine? fires and no one's yeah. helping. Could you imagine a world where there's two fires in the same block and Rob Lowe gets 70% of the fire department? <laughs> <laughs> His house is just always on fire. <laughs> yeah, like to what extent is uh, Sorkin sort of – just injecting his cranky, like rich guy reactionaryism into uh, what he dresses up as, as like a liberal, um, ostensibly progressive uh, inequality, not having fantasy. Yeah, actually, you know what's funny about uh, bef- uh, before I answer that Rob Lowe clip, um, he actually tweeted that out during a Democratic uh, debate between Sanders and Clinton. Like he tweeted his own character doing this like shitty rant about tax policy, like at like at Bernie Sanders, like that's the level of you know fantasy at work here. Like this guy is a real human being; he can express his own opinions, and yet he's still choosing to do them in character because that's the like level of fiction that that this show and its universe is apparently imposed on American liberalism. Um, yeah, I think I, we all want to hear Rob Lowe go off script <laughs> ranting about taxes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, a less, a less uh, that you know, the part of the the recent Sorkin clip that everybody um, you know kind of honed in on, understandably, was this patronizing comment, obviously directed at AOC. Um, but then something he says later in the interview. Um, when he was asked about Trump, uh, he said, it is not the role of the president to stoop to the lowest common denominator. It's the role of the president to try to elevate us all. And we have had presidents, both Republican and Democrat, who have been fantastic at doing that, who can put a lump in our throat and can, and can appeal to the better angels in our nature. Uh, and then he goes on to describe what that is. And he says, uh, you can make people understand there's more that unites than divides, blah, blah, blah. And then it, the way he finishes this whole thought is he said, honestly, it's good speech writers is what you need. Um, so I feel like he's being pretty explicit there. Like the point of politics for him is just, yeah, put a lump in the throat of guys like me, uh, you know, ha- like write, write good speeches. Like I really think it is like by its own admission, it's or by its own admission, it is that shallow. So wh- why are these people not just conservatives? Is what I ask. Like, is it? It's pure. It's purely aesthetic, right? I mean, they, I think it's it's channeling the politics of of you know a certain type of urban you know you know like a certain kind of urban liberalism that just doesn't really have the cultural affectations of uh, conservatism and isn't like geographically rooted in the same parts of the country. But I mean, I think the 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 the, the question is on to something because, you know, obviously uh, these two types of political affects do actually converge on a lot of substantive issues, right? They're both obsessed with the deficit and like they're both very, uh, they're both very suspicious of the idea of using the state to try to do anything uh, good and to some degree think that uh, anybody doing that is actually like that's the source of the problem is is people's like, naive do-goodery um but yeah i mean the reasons why it's not just conservative i mean it is conservative in a small c way and its implications so um we could you know actually in detail you know maybe dispute how substantively different some of it is and i think the the west wing also adores a certain type of conservative right they're always they're always putting these uh uh, they're always putting these like reasonable Republicans into episodes uh, who sometimes kind of are, are there to one up the liberal characters and teach us all an important lesson, which is that, you know, we all love the troops and we all love this country um, and we're all, we're all on the same bipartisanship. Team. Yeah, we're all on the same team. So uh, it seems like on the West Wing, Sor- Sorkin especially, like there is, um, yeah, a pretense to sort of a higher um, – decency and uh, cultural cosmopolitanism and, and liberalism. Um, but you see, uh, I would think a lot of some of the, that the, that worldview is more mendacious, more uh, reactionary and mean spirited um, 
th- like thought coming out of a figure like Bill Maher. To what extent do you think he is kind of the valve for the nastier sides of, of this uh, centrist worldview? Yeah, I mean, I, he because he has uh, um, like I think I think he's doing something similar for a kind of cable news uh, medium, but it it is more openly mean spirited, and it's not just about like the smart dumb uh, binary that Sorkin's so fond of. Like, it's also about this kind of very Bush era clash of civilizations thing. You know, it's like. Uh, uh, you know, that, that wing of kind of the new atheist movement that, you know, maybe all of us were probably into kind of circa 2006 or, or something. Like I know I was, um, where, but, but, you know, the atheism often kind of takes a back seat to just like, like rampant Islamophobia and, and Omar is like the Chris Hitchens of comedy. Yeah. I mean, I, I was amazed when I, when I, uh, was doing research for uh, the piece I wrote on Bill Maher that like that he is supposed to be like a comedian. Like I didn't realize that that was like the milieu that he ostensibly came out of because uh, like he's I guess kind of like I associated him with people like John Stewart and Stephen Colbert. Like obviously they're a lot different, but um, just in terms of like the pundit qua comedian or or whatever kind of. Uh, mold but i didn't realize that he actually comes like from the world of comedy and then also he's been doing this since the 90s like he used to like he had his uh politically incorrect show and he's always loved to punch left i would say more than uh punch right which is actually something that he and uh sorkin have in common another thing they have in common I have your article up on Bill Maher here, and I was just perusing it before the interview, and there was one quote that really took me out of it, which was uh, Bill Maher in 2001 discussing Vietnam as necessary. Um, quote, the bullies of the world, we would put our, we showed the bullies of the world, we would put ourselves on the line and spend lives. <laughs> <laughs> He also said it he ended the Cold War. It ended the Cold War. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make By any sense. Yeah, that's right. Movie. You drop you drop napalm on on Vietnam, and then thirty years later, uh, the Soviet Union collapses. Clearly, those are the, yeah, like the what? same thing. Yeah. To be fair, that was after nine uh, eleven, and he uh, is of course a self described nine eleven liberal, uh, which is <laughs> the one. Aren't, aren't we all? 